Hey everybody, my name is Jim Farmer. I'm the Festival Director of Out on Film and welcome to Out on Film 34. This is our first year as a hybrid festival. We'll be doing films in theater and we'll also have virtual programming as well. And we'll be doing a lot of Q and A's, um, hopefully both in person and on virtual as well. I'm so happy today to welcome the director and star of the terrific film, Jump Darling. We have director Phil Connell and actor Thomas Duplessy. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Hi. Sure thing. Um, in the new film, Jump Darling, a rookie drag queen reeling from a breakup escapes to the country where he finds his grandmother in steep decline, desperate to avoid the local nursing home. Directed by Phil Connell, the film also stars Thomas Duplessy and in her last role, Cloris Leachman. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Well, first off, let, let's start with the, always the first question. How did this film come up? <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is my first feature film and, yeah. uh, the, uh, I had always wanted to, fe uh, family dramas was sort of the films that got me into films. So, sure. uh, that was sort of my, uh, that was sort of my starting point. And, uh, at the time that I began writing the film, I had been having a lot of end of life conversations with my grandmother and, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of became the seed of inspiration for, uh, the character of Margaret and her story. And, um, and I was also, you know, personally recommitting to filmmaking and, uh, you know, kind of struggling with um, my own internal judgments about that choice and the world's judgments around me and wanted to tell a story about choosing life as a queer artist, but um, uh, was more interested in situating that within the world of drag, which is mm -hmm. sort of a, a, on the knife's edge of, um, of queer artistry. So, um, kind of separated it from myself and, and turned it into this story about a drag queen and his grandmother. Okay. So, um, Thomas, how did you, how did you come to the film? Uh, my agent sent me through the audition. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, the sides came through and immediately I was, I was pretty struck by a few of the parallels between Russell and myself. I mean, in, in the same, uh, in the first audition scene, it said that, you know, Russell is a Pisces, I'm a Pisces, said his most recent ex, Justin, my most recent ex at, this thing, at that time was Justin, um, you know, out of work, gay actor, check, you know, everything, it, it, right off the top, it felt different. Okay. Can you just talk, I mean, this is a question for both of you. Can you just talk a little bit about what the main character is dealing with at the beginning of the film? Yeah, I mean, Russell is is really dealing with, um, you know, trying to decide what um, the next part of his life is going to be. You know, he, I think, expected at this point to, you know, have a, you know, a solid career as an actor um, and to be self-sufficient, uh, but is certainly not and is now at a crossroads of whether or not he's going to you know, um, choose life as an artist and ultimately um, does. And he's, you know, just in, in this kind of internal conflict between where he is now and where he wants to be. Yeah, I think, I think like, you know, for me, Russell's story is, um, you know, very much like sort of a quintessential, you know, the quintessential struggle that, um, you know, artists have throughout you know, their path, um, which is, you know, um, being, being simultaneously attracted to something and wanting to do something and feeling drawn to it for sort of uh, compelled towards uh, a particular sort of expression, um, but at the same time, fearing that that choice will leave them isolated and marginalized. Um, and, uh, and kind of hearing, having a lot of voices around them, both with from in them and around them that kind of reinforce that. And, and it's fighting to kind of overcome uh, those voices and those judgments to ultimately make the choice with confidence and enthusiasm. So when Russell goes home and, and, and first sees and, and deals with his grandmother, I mean, what would, what would you say the experience is like for him? Um, I, I'd say initially, I mean, he wasn't really intending to take care of his grandmother. Sure. Um, and initially, he didn't expect to see his grandmother in such steep decline. Mm -hmm. um, and this was all, you know, a means to an end, kind of get there, get the car, you know, peace out. Um, and so I think it was just another unexpected 
kind of roadblock in Russell's journey and a kind of sorting of priorities um, for him. So it was unexpected, but this, but at the same time, eventually, um, you know, he realizes kind of what what um, a gift that period of time was to spend with his grandmother. So Phil, what what made Thomas perfect for the role? <laughs> Well, so our casting process for this film was we wanted to cast a star in the role of Margaret. It was kind okay. of the vision and to discover a star for the role of, of Russell. So uh, on the one hand, we were, you know, making offers to, you know, known quantities in Hollywood. And on the other uh, side, we were doing an open call in Canada. Um, and uh, we saw, you know, over 150 people for wow. the, the role. And um, Thomas uh, actually came up in his his submission his tape was actually one of the earlier tapes that we saw and he stood out right away as sure. potentially you know being our guy um uh, you know within you know the 15 or 20 tapes we saw at that point and but unfortunately because we were so concerned that it was so early days it couldn't possibly be real so we had to <laughs> sort of searching and searching only to only to return to the person who was the top of our list the entire time so he had to he had to do uh, a variety, I think up to three callbacks with fully choreographed drag routines before we fully offered him the role. But um, we all were obviously very confident at the point at which we did because we put him through the, through the ringer. <laughs> how would you say, Thomas, how would you compare Russell to your drag persona in the movie Fishy? Um, how would I compare Russell to Fishy? Well, I mean, I think with any, um, you know, uh, drag artist, they all kind of speak of this transformation that happens when they put a wig on and sure. makeup on and their heels on. <laughs> and I think um, a lot of it is uh, the confidence that Russell wasn't able to uh, have in his everyday life as a struggling actor, he found through drag. And so I think it it is, all of the aspects of Russell that he wished he could bring to the table any other part of his life that he is finally able to um, through drag. So it's, it's all of the other hidden layers um, to him, mainly it's confidence. It's funny, it's like, it's like that, you know, RuPaul often talks about this when, if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, she often talks about, um, you know, that power that's available to you, that power that you feel and embody when you're in drag is available to you when you're out of drag. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, which, is, which is not something I knew of or had heard about when writing this story, but I did speak to a lot of drag queens. And uh, it's interesting how, how the movie has reflected that back, you know, and uh, having heard that in hindsight. Um, and it's, it's kind of a really interesting idea. Thomas, how had you done drag before? No, this is the first time I had ever done drag. Um, okay. I went to musical theater school, so I had a bit of a background, a little yeah. bit in dance. I have really close friends who do drag. And of course, you know, living in Toronto for the past 13 years, very well acquainted with the drag scene there. Um, and, you know, big fan of drag race and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. But yeah, first time throwing on a wig and heels. I mean, would you say that, you know, what what is in getting into the role was it harder to was it was the physicality harder or was it just getting into you know the emotional space where the character was yeah i'd say the the, the most difficult part about russell and in getting into character was probably the emotional sphere of sure. it um I, I mean the 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 physicality of doing drag for the first time was also um a huge challenge just physically. i can imagine all of the respects to queens that do that full time. <laughs> I mean, it took all of me to do that. Um, yeah, I would say I would say the the emotional sphere of Russell having to deal with you know having a crutch of substance addiction and then having to really deal with the um, the emotional aspects of um, a fresh breakup plus where where am I in my life and where am I in my career? And then the emotional aspect of taking on the responsibility of taking care of a 94 year old grandmother and fighting with his mom and you know, the list goes on. I have to ask obviously about Cloris Leachman. I mean, what, what made her so right for this role? Cause she's, I mean, you know, I've been watching Cloris Leachman for decades and she's always 
on point, but boy, she is so good in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, a great question. I mean, uh, you know, when we when we started to look to cast the role of Margaret, I mean, we were basically looking for actors, you know, over the age over the age of eighty five in Hollywood who were still working, um, which is a pretty short list. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, once so Cloris was on that list very quickly obviously and uh once we sort of thought about floors and sort of looked at it, it was like it, it almost immediately felt right because there was a few things practically about Cloris that she she was still working regularly and routinely um she was also very indie friendly and uh had a history of taking on all sorts of roles on all sorts of projects of, of varying you know sort of statures um, and she also happened to be, I believe, um, I don't remember exactly, but uh, certainly, if not the oldest, one of the oldest performers on the list. Um, so it just sort of, you know, there was a bunch of things that sort of, you know, it was like, this could work. She also had, um, you know, was very well known, obviously, in, in recent years because mm -hmm. of her television work for her comedy, um, but has a long history of dramatic roles as well particularly in in her in her younger years and certainly that's why she won her oscar so last picture show what an amazing oh yeah yeah so so there was sort of this idea that you know the character of margaret certainly it was a dramatic part but there was a lot of comedy in in in, in the role and so it sort of it sort of just started to the stars sort of aligned um i mean obviously we didn't audition chloris um, <laughs> there was no tape um so, you know, whether or not she was going to be perfect or not was just sort of an instinctual thing and whether or not she and, and Thomas would have the chemistry to create that kind of heartbeat of the story that we really wanted, the relationship between the two of them, all of that was just the magic and the luck of it working, you know, when yeah. we all got together. Phil, how did you react when you found out that Chloris was a, was a, was a yes? Uh, we were overjoyed. Uh, we were, I remember our casting director called and said, um, you know, and it had been a, a lot of work and a lot of letter writing and a lot of, you know, kind of, uh, and we were coming up against timelines too. It was, I think it was about, it was a little, it was less than two months before we planned to go to camera. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he sort of said, I want to talk to you guys urgently. And I remember calling Katie, my producer and saying, oh my God, <laughs> it's a yes. Could this be a yes? And, and it was. Um, so we were, we were thrilled. Um, I think the most exciting calls I made in the entire process was when I called Thomas, um, and then also Linda Cash, who plays Ian in the film to let them know that Cloris was going to be playing the role of Margaret. Cause I, we cast him and I, and it was close, but everything wasn't sort of sorted out contracts and everything else. So I couldn't tell him. Um, and, uh, those were really fun calls. Tell us what was it like being on set with her? Oh, it was a joy. It was, um, I mean, she's everything that you hear people say she is. Totally spontaneous, mm -hmm. um, you know, inappropriate, and I, like unpredictable. Um, but she was also, she was also a pro and had, you know, the, the biggest heart in the world. And, um, you know, she taught me a lot. She arrived with over 70 years worth of of experience and so you know I just soaked it up and pinched myself every minute of every day. There's there's so much great stuff in this film and this really is a crowd-pleasing film but you know for me obviously the crux of the film is the relationship between these two characters. Can you talk about how they change each other throughout the course of the film? I mean for a question for either one of you. Yeah I mean I think that you know, it's it's sort of it is very much a film about two people who you know who love each other and have a history, um, how they come together and how they leave each other. And you know, I um, I think the the best way for me to answer that question is is that the role of Margaret was very much inspired by my grandmother, and um, the relationship I had with her was a very uh, important one in my life and very influential on my life. And she was, um, yeah, this, just this, this presence. Um, and it's sort of, it's such a unique relationship, the kind of, uh, the grandmother, grandson or, or sure. grandmother, granddaughter or grandfather, granddaughter, you know, that the intergenerational thing, cause it, it's like, 
it sort of, um, you know, transcends the parental relationship into something that has that, um, you know, the, the wisdom and the friendship, you know, like, uh, you know, and, and so much is known, but so much is unspoken. Um, and there's so much, you know, joy in it. Um, and, you know, so that's where it really came from for me. Um, again, without even really knowing that, it's one of the things that the film kind of reflects back on me. You know, you, yeah. you, I came at it with that idea, I guess, but um, it's like, well, wow, that's, that's what that relationship was like. So that's kind of what I put into it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think that totally answers your question, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, the effect that Margaret has on Russell is that it kind of brings into focus for Russell um, the importance of doing what you love with the time that you have to do it. And I think that that's ultimately kind of the lesson that Russell leaves with. Um, and then with Margaret or Russell's effect on, on, on Graham's is Graham seeing that all of the joy that is in life and all of, the, all of, um, of what Russell has to live for um, it's all there. He knows exactly what he's going to do and he's going to do it, which makes Graham kind of realize that all of what I liked and had is well in the past. And it's now kind of time for me to wrap it up. Um, and so whereas kind of Russell inspires um, a, a sense of uh, moving on for Cloris and, or Graham in, in a very specific way, Grams inspires a, a sense of moving on okay. with Russell in a totally different way. And I think one of the things, yeah, sorry, I got lost in the relationship aspect, but the, um, we talk a lot about the, you know, one of the sort of overarching themes in the film being about kind of resting control of your own destiny. And I think the, the two of them help each other sure. get on that glide path to say, I'm in charge. You, if I'm correct, you made this film before COVID, correct? Yeah, we shot it in June 2019, so a little over two years ago. Was was there? How did COVID affect the release and, and getting it to audiences? Yeah, so um, it's been a challenge. Yeah. Uh, it's been, I mean, you know, this is my first feature, so I, I don't have a lot to compare it to. <laughs> I, you know, I know that indie film releasing is always, and, and any film really is always kind of a bumpy, rocky road. Releasing it is just as complicated as trying to make it. Um, sure. And uh, so, you know, maybe it would be, it would probably be complicated anyway, but I think it is just added extra complications um, in terms of kind of the timing of everything. It's all taken a little longer. Um, we're released in Canada, but we're not released in the States. We're touring festivals in, in the States and we're touring festivals in, in Europe. And um, so I think that would have looked a little bit different. Um, Finishing it took a little longer because we were in post-production when the pandemic hit. So a lot of stuff went remote. And um, But I mean, we, we were quite blessed, I would say, uh, in the fact that we were able to shoot it. We were able to raise all of our financing and everything before COVID hit. I think all exactly. of that made that a lot more challenging. So it's been challenging, but we're, we're I, I'm feeling quite blessed in terms of how it played out for us. Congratulations. Obviously, this this film could play at any festival. I mean, it's just a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves it. But I mean, can you talk a little bit about the experience of, of seeing this with an LGBT community who just really just adore this film? Yeah. Um, my mind kind of goes uh, to um, our showing in, in San Francisco sure. kind of where like Delta came into play. Um, you know, we had sold out the Castro and there was, you know, 700 people there and and it was the first time we were actually able to sit in an audience yeah. in, in the theater um, with a bunch of queers. So that was great. And as soon as um, Cloris came on screen, you know, it was it was applause and cheers and, and all of that. And, and you know, it, it, it's so great watching the film with with gay audiences because it's just it, it, it feels comfortable and it feels embraced. And uh, yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, and I think there's a, there's been a there's a lot more laughs I think than we anticipated. You know, it is a, it is a dramatic film in in at a, at its core, but um, 
people find a lot more humor in it than I, I think I imagined, which is really, really nice. And, and, and to Thomas's point, I think um, Russell's story is um, a complicated one and that there's a bit of inside baseball in it in terms of, you know, uh, from it being kind of a, a very much a queer story. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, straight audiences kind of struggle, I think a little bit to understand some of what he's going through. Uh, and so being able to see it with career audience is really nice because I think that they appreciate the mixture of the artist story and the queer story converging into the complexity that he faces. Okay. All right. So final question, what's next for both of you? What's next for me? I am um, taking the auditions as they come. Sure. Um, yeah. So you know, I, ha I have to do a self tape immediately after this. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed that um, another project that was as much of a joy to shoot as this one comes um, down the pipeline. But I think, you know, what's next in term immediately with this film is just, uh, you know, promoting it and, um, you know, hoping for the best. Um, I've got a couple things on the go. I've got a, I've got a series project, a small town kind of crime drama that's also set in Prince Edward County. Uh, which is where a big part of the film was set uh, that I'm really excited about. And um, I've also got another uh, independent feature that I'm working on uh, that's another family drama. Uh, nice. that deals with some of the kind of uh, cultural headwinds that we're facing um, as a community, a world community in terms of climate change and uh, gentrification and things like that. But another family drama, I guess I, that's just maybe my thing. I don't know, we'll see. Great. The film is Jump Darling. It is available in cinema and on virtual at Island Film 34. It's also available for jury awards and our audience awards. So you can see the film, vote for it. Um, Phil, Thomas, thank you much for this amazing film. Uh, thanks for taking time today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.